Hello, Bees Bladers. Welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. I have what looks to be a beast of a night to share with you guys and gals. And this is the cloth that comes with it. It's a stretchy cloth and wait till you see this. And it comes with a special tool. I'm really interested in this because as you know, I like to take knives apart and we're going to take it apart with that special tool. And pal, would you look at that? Oh boy, that is wicked looking. Wait till you see the blade. We're going to look at it here in just a second. This is the Even Grow EF55B. And man, and from what I understand, this is inspired by the SOCOM Elite uh, by Microtech. I think it looks very similar to that one. I'm not sure. I've never handled that. But take a look at these, these uh, what do you call those? The screws match the thumb stud. And they, they're all, that is, that is like inwards and that's outwards. And that's what this little special tool is going to go to. And let me show you the tool. I can't get into bags. I just rip them or cut them open. Here's the little tool that comes with it. That's going to be interesting, taking it apart. We'll see how well that works. But giving you a good look up at, at night, good up look at it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Pretty nice looking thumb studs. We'll see how those are going to work out. And then we'll check out the fit and finish and all that fun stuff, but give you a little texture vision right off the bat. It doesn't have much texture, but I'm wondering how if all these grooves are going to help out in that department. It looks cool. It almost looks micarta-ish just a little bit. And there's your uh, lanyard hole. And, you know, that I don't think that's titanium, but it is some kind of anodized blue metal. Giving you a top look. It looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Man, look at that heavy-duty barrel spacer. Whoa, mama. And this side, and look at this blade. Holy cow. <laughs> this is going to be a beast. I mean, a beast of a work knife. Look at the tip. It's an arrow. <laughs> the tip is an arrow. Wow. It looks pretty uniformly ground from the tip. Are you ready to see this big blade? Let's get in here. Ready? Pow, right in the kisser. Oh, my goodness. This is a wicked looking knife. Oh, my gosh. And we are going to, I can't wait to take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside. Whoa, mama. Would you look at it? Just look at it. Giving you a good look. Sometimes I don't pause enough. If you want to take a screenshot, you can take a screenshot. And they always look better in person than they do on pictures. So let's go from one end down to the other. So you have some nice vertical grind. The grind looks, the, the primary grind looks pretty good. And you have vertical grinds right here. And I'm noticing right off the bat, the inside of this huge fuller is kind of sharp. We'll see how that turns out. Right inside here is where I'm talking about that I'm grabbing with my finger. That's very sharp. It's not uh, softened off at all. Both directions, a little grabby. And we do have a little notch missing right there. And, oh, look at that. There's no branding. There's not a bunch of branding. I like that. Just on this side, it says D2. And what does this grind look like? Let's see what the grind... Um, the grind looks like it's it's shallow here, gets a little deeper, and then it's more shallow right here. And then up here, this grind doesn't look too bad, looks pretty uniform. And how about this side? The grind on this side, this side looks more uniform. Speaking of grind, let's see if it'll cut some paper out of the box. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Not too shabby, not too shabby. It's pretty sharp. How about the uh, just the tip? The tip is not too bad either. All right, I'm impressed. I didn't think it was going to be that sharp with it being such a thick blade. But let's move on. And you know, I got to guess the weight real quick. Let's see. Um, Oh, it's definitely heavier than my Manix 2. It's past the 5 mark. I'm going to go... I'm going to go a 6. Let's go a 6 even. And it is. 6.15 ounces. Pretty close. I, I knew it was going to be a hefty boy. Now, at the time of this video's posting, there's three options. You can get it in black, desert tan, and jade, and they run about $29. So this is going to be a big beastly boy for $29. And for everybody that likes the stats, there you go. I went and measured everything. I measured everything three, four, five times. That way it's nice and up to date. And I'm calling the hardware Tri-Wing. I don't know if it's Tri-Wing, why. Uh, you know, you guys, you guys know more than I do. Let me know what you think. So look at that. Your blade length, 3.87 inches, three and three quarter inch blade, baby. And your total length is almost nine inches. So it is not a little knife. Let's see how solid she is. Oh yeah, my goodness. Left and right, up and down. It feels like a fixed blade. I mean, it is, it is super, super solid. How's the lockup? 
Lockup is, uh, I'd say, around about 40-ish, 45%, just about right in the middle. And are we centered? Yes, we are centered. My goodness, look at that ginormous tip. That's what she said. And how does this pocket clip do in and out of the pocket? Not too bad, not too shabby. Yeah, so I'm not getting any problems with the pocket clip. And this is definitely, definitely going to be a work type knife. And it's not deep carry. You're going to be able to grab it out of your pocket. And I've talked about this before. Not every knife is designed to be deep carry where you have to dig in your pocket to get it out. You're definitely going to be able to pull this sucker out no problem. And it is not reversible, which is unfortunate. I'm going to lay this puppy out and give you some quick size comparisons. And you know what? We're going to go right off with the Spider Coat Tenacious. Boy, <laughs> the Spyderco Tenacious feels like a larger knife till so you get that next to it. And here's the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And I'm put, trying to put them up pivot to pivot. So there's those three. Yeah, it's, I'm going to have to find some bigger knives. Here's the Kubi Carve. I was trying to find another Tonto. And here's the Sin Cut Episode. Look at that. We're, we're not even there yet. <laughs> I'm trying to find something to its size. All right, how about... The Civivi Praxis. Okay, now we're in the ballpark. <laughs> and the Praxis isn't a small knife, but I'm telling you what, if you haven't checked one of these out, go check them out. They, this is a sweet knife. And they, I think they still run like around 40, 42 bucks. And this is the CJRB Crag. I'm trying to get out there. Jeez. Let's do a couple more. Here's the Ontario Rat number one. And how about the Kaiser Roach? One of my favorites. Love the roach. So the the rat number one is right just about exactly the same length. There's a little more handle on this one right here. We'll do two more. The EF928. You guys remember this one? <laughs> this thing is a beast. I mean, it is a beast. And how about the EF915? So now that's about as close as I can get. Let's check out the action and the ergos. And if you like my content, you like... Coming to Bees Blades and checking out the knives. Give me a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. All right, you ready? Pow, right in the kisser. Boy, it's like ka-chunk. It's a ka-chunker. It takes a second to get out there. So let's see. You know, the drop's not too bad. I, of course, I kind of expect that with a little bit of weight to it. So I do give it a start. And then it goes all the way down. So let me back out here just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it 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 comes out with a Thor tie. And, you know, these thumb studs are different. I'm trying to get an idea what to tell you. The thumb studs aren't, they're not soft. You can definitely feel the tip, just the tip. You can feel the edges. The edges aren't rounded off. They're a little, they're not sharp, but they, they do grab a hold of your finger. It's easy to use with my right hand, easy to use with my left hand. Unfortunately, you can't, can't reverse the pocket clip. I wish you could. But you guys and gals already know. So it's easy to deploy, and then as far as, your access to the lock bar is not bad. You have a little bit of jimping going on right there. The jimping's not aggressive. It's easy to use. So that's a good thing. I'm happy about that. And then let's see. Let's check the ergos. My hand is four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here, and from the bottom of my palm to the tip of my middle finger, you already know, seven and a quarter. And how's she feel? Just with the light grip, just holding it like normal? Pretty nice. Pretty comfortable. I'm not, that pocket clip is not bothering me whatsoever. That is nice. And how about the classic grip? Ooh, yeah. Check that out. It's locking my thumb into place. My thumb just falls right where it's supposed to. That's not too bad. And man, I can see doing some scraping. I really love this type of blade for doing utility work. I love utility blades. Any blade that when I look at it, I can see a use for it. And this one is going to have, you have two points. It's good for opening packages. I like a good Tonto. Let's see. Can I slow roll it? Oh yes. Easy to slow roll. And I will mention the inside of the inside of this fuller is quite sharp. Like it grabs a hold of your skin. You're not going to miss it. It is definitely not, you're not going to slip when you do that. And can I reverse flick it? Yes, very easy to reverse flick. So you have multiple, multiple options for opening it up. You know what? Before we do a final count on it, let's see if we can use this tool and take this thing apart using those new, new type of screws that I'm not sure what they're called. Okay, here we are. Now, you know, I think I probably have tools that will match this out in my garage, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do it with just what was provided because if you buy this knife, this is what you'll get. And I, I don't know what's supposed to go in here. So I just grabbed a random Allen wrench and I'm going to try it like this or try it like this and see how it works. Let's see how it goes. And hopefully it won't take forever 
So this big part is going to fit in the pivot. I've seen a couple knives like this online before and wondered about them. So if you get this knife, this, this hopefully will give you an idea. We'll see if we can even take it apart. Is it going to... All right, so let's see. We have an issue already. The problem we have is we have a spinning pivot. And with the spinning pivot, let me try it one more time here. All right, so the pivot is spinning. And you're going to have to have something on the other side strong enough because I don't have two of these tools that I know of. And it's just spinning. You're going to have to be able to hold this side. And the problem I'm seeing right now that I don't think we're going to deal with is that if I start unscrewing this side, I don't have another tool to do this side. I might in the garage, but the issue you're going to have if you buy this knife and you get this tool is that it, you're not going to be able to take it apart unless you have something really sturdy and grabby, like a hard piece of rubber maybe to hold on to this side so it won't spin. But I'm able to turn it but I can't keep it from spinning and I have the feeling, let me, let me check the other one while we're here. And that's why this video is why I'm doing this video. Let's see what happens when I do this side. Okay. So that, that easily comes undone that this one. Okay. Now look what, look what's going on here. It's spinning. So I have the feeling we would be here about way too long. That one coming, that one's coming undone. And let's check this one. This one is spinning. I think I would probably, I would need something on the other side or two of these tools. And now that I'm trying to tighten it back, it's just spinning. So that that is what I would do. If I was anybody that was just buying this knife, then I, I would plan on getting another one of these tools. You could probably run to Harbor Freight and get a set for uh, probably three or four bucks, I would imagine. You would need this size and then this size, and then you'd be able to take it apart. That's if you want to take it apart. A lot of folks that are getting knives in this range, in the $20, $25, $30 range, don't even take their knives apart. So I'm not going to for the sake of this video. So let's go back. And we're back. So some pros and cons. Well, a pro would be if you want a really beefy knife that you're going to be able to do whatever you want with. I mean, look at the blade stock on this thing. It is a beast. This thing is... <laughs> It is a super beast. And there's a lot of folks that absolutely love this blade style. I can say right now, the action is great. It was already centered. It came sharp. Um, it doesn't have the best grind on one side. It has got a kind of in and out. But we're talking about a $29 knife. So I'm keeping that in mind when I give you my comments. It does have good ergos. Let me back out some more. It does have good, good ergo. It has good ergos. <laughs> It has good ergos. My hand fits it well. There's no hot spots. And if you have a large hand, an extra large hand, or an extra, extra large hand, you have handle for days. There's a little bit of jimping back here to help with grip. This would be a great knife if you had a glove on also. And for, look at that. You can put your finger up here. Your thumb kind of falls into place there and here. And the reverse grip, the reverse grip is comfortable too. So, uh, you know, a couple of the, con let's look, what, do we have a sharpening choil? Nope, the uh, plunge grind ends right there, so you might get about a sharpening, maybe maybe a couple sharpenings before you hit the plunge grind. It is a cool looking knife. Aesthetically, it looks sweet. Another little uh, kickback. This edge, these inside edges right here are just a tad sharp for my liking. If you look, if you look right here, you can see it's taken off fingernail. <laughs> it is, it is pretty, it is pretty sharp. Matter of fact, I would not want to run my finger down there too hard. So, you know, 29 bucks, it's up to you what you what you think about it. Um, I, I wish, you know, it came with a special tool. I'm not why, sure why they used the, uh, the special stuff because you would need uh, two sets of them, which isn't the end of the world. You could run and get it or probably order it on Amazon. But other than that, not being able to take it apart right off the bat, I mean, I wasn't going to take a half an hour to get it apart and find the tools and all that. So, you know, it's kind of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's a fun knife. It's definitely a beast and a beater. I'm curious what you all think about it. You know, I, was, I had a couple surprises about it. I was looking forward to taking it apart. But other than that, it works well. It has great ergos. I think it's a pretty cool knife. 
especially if you're a collector and you like buying, you know, $30 knives to add to your collection. So let me know what you think. And if you don't have any opinions about the knife, tell me what you had for breakfast. What are you doing tomorrow? What'd you do this weekend? Just say hello and help support the channel. I really appreciate y'all. Until I talk to you again or see you in the live streams or in the chats, remember, live right from the present. Did I say that? <laughs> live life in the present. Keep a band-aid handy and don't cut yourself.